Hello and welcome to this example of using simulation for operator training. This is an example of a, of a simulation uh, training system that we provided to uh, a plant in Arizona. We copied their SCADA system interface so that operators would be allowed to select uh, simulation scenarios and observe output from the model in a way that it was intuitive to them. So here we're showing uh, running a simulation. The uh, SCADA screen you're seeing was a, a snapshot, a, a screenshot of what was uh, available at the plant. And we have overlain the results from the model in a way that is uh, most intuitive. The users can come in and create new uh, loading scenarios by adjusting these parameters uh, uh, by typing in a number or moving the uh, slider around. And they can get access to operational parameters as well. Uh, menus can be used to access things like the DO control settings, the recycle rates, the wastage rates, and so on. So once the simulation's been run, uh, users can uh, observe the results of the simulation by coming to these tabs here and seeing how things changed over time. So if we look at the uh, effluent quality here, we can see the daily diurnal pattern and then the results of that uh, increase in flow partway through the simulation. Here's another example we did for uh, Cleveland, Ohio. In this case, they can select uh, several different models. If we look at the uh, second stage activated sludge system, uh, this is a slightly different setup here. In this particular case, there were different parameters that uh, were identified as the ones that uh, operators wanted to be able to adjust. And we can do that, provide that using nomenclature and, and wording and uh, terminology that the operators are used to. And in this case, uh, they can control airflow, DO control set points, uh, recycle rates, wastage rates, and select from a number of different types of pre-configured scenarios to, to uh, undergo. So this is uh, one of the storms that they had identified that they wanted to be able to run on a regular basis. So you can take a look at the mixed liquor profile here and see how that changes as the simulation is going on. Uh, here's the DO profile, uh, fairly solid as the DO controllers are on at this point. And the storm will happen here in, a, in about uh, a, a simulated day or two. Uh, there it goes, it's started to go now. And you can see that the uh, operators can easily access uh, the output from the model to look at how that storm is going to behave at their plant. In this case, they can access uh, uh, the loading to the plant to, to create different loading scenarios with the storm and take a look at uh, the uh, results of the model right on that graph, which again, in this case, also came from their SCADA system. We also prepared a bit more of a straightforward schematic too. So we can uh, get access to the other parts of the plant as well, going back out here and taking a look at the uh, other parts of the activated sludge system. So we can see here that uh, the, that simulation had been observed in this part of the plant as well. So uh, let's uh, grab a different storm this time and run another simulation. So this is a 14-day uh, simulation and we'll look at ammonia this time as we're running uh, throughout the plant. In this part of the plant they have access to uh, a slightly different set of uh, input operational parameters or related to primary treatment. And we can see here that there is some uh, secondary control. This is where they were adjusting their phosphorus removal. So for example, if we take a look at the uh, phosphorus, total phosphorus coming out of that plant, which is right hanging around uh, one and a half milligra milligrams per liter or so, and we start making adjustments, we can see that uh, that drops a little bit if we increase the chemical dosage. And this is uh, a, a training way, a, a way of interactively having the operators get used to adjusting uh, that and seeing what happens in the model. So now that's been bumped up and we've knocked it down to just uh, over one milligram per liter. And if we, if we knock it up again, now it's down to below one milligram per liter. So it's a way to allow people to interactively play around with things just the way that they uh, would at the plant. Here's a third example, again, just to give you a feel for the different types of interfaces that uh, we can create, different types of inputs, different types of outputs. In each of these cases, uh, the interface is designed to, to be as intuitive of, as possible and customized to the particular plant in question. So the underlying model, which is developed in the GPSX software, predicts a full suite of uh, inputs uh, and outputs that come from the operational uh, setting uh, the operational settings that have been provided by the user. 
However, this interface that we lie on top of it uh, makes it intuitive to use and, and limits the uh, input to changes to only those that would be available uh, at the operations level. So here we can see some animation that shows the uh, behavior of the plant. We are looking here at TKN throughout the entire plant after we ran uh, a 14 day simulation. And if we look here, we can take a look at those effluent results. So if we wanted, for example, uh, you know, a lesson based around how aeration affects uh, nitrification in a plant, we can come here, make some adjustments to the air flows that are coming uh, into that activated sludge system. If we turn down the air and maybe knock back the recycle here uh, a little bit, try to get some energy savings, for example, we can then uh, run that simulation again and see how that compares. So when we run that again, uh, we're going to do our 14 day output. We can look at those effluent numbers and compare them with before and see a time series results of, of how that was a, uh, that simulation ran. So this is a nice way to interactively allow uh, people to uh, run simulations and learn about how those particular operational uh, parameters affect their performance.